Yeah, g'day guys, Steve here from Dirt Bike ADV. Out on the AJP, my recent trip up into the Gulf, got caught out the back of Lawn Hill Gorge, Riversley Station. Um, I was going to have to ride into the night to get where I wanted to go. Uh, which is the second time it's happened to me coming back from the uh, station country um, just had to get my son to come pick me up the lights on this are nowhere near good enough after that episode I ordered a uh, an ET racing uh, LED light so I'm out I fitted it on the weekend and I'm just out it's a bloody freezing cold night but I'm out trying it out so I'm just going to go through here I've tried it out once and tried to film it once before and wasn't really successful. The screen here in front of the camera uh, overcompensates the um, the aperture or something to do with some of the camera settings so you don't get a, a, a sort of feel for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the three modes that uh, I now have with this bike. So first of all we'll go back to I'll stand up. So that's low beam for the standard uh, AJP Hella uh, light. Now typically with these they go to a high beam and the low beam turns off. Now the high beam was not much better I've got to say. Uh, it went a little bit further but yeah it, it, it's pretty average light. Um, it's very yellow, very pale. You really couldn't do much more than 60 kilometres an hour and uh, as I experienced if it was raining at all um, when I was coming back from the uh, station country um, I got to Hillsville, it was raining and uh, yeah my lights were useless, I could not see a thing so uh, I ordered one then but didn't unfortunately come in until I um, uh, before I went away so yeah I've now come back from the golf country trip and um, yeah it's uh, now I sort of had a chance to fit it. So low beam on the uh, AJP standard Hella halogen light. Now um, on low beam the ET racing light also has a, what you call a parker light or a safety light or a clearance light a little LED going as well up in the top of the, um, the headlight so you sort of got a little bit of LED light and this yellow light now ET racing give you a second low beam so that's low beam it's a little switch they give you which you mount on your mirror or somewhere like that which is a nice simple waterproof switch which is quite good that gives you another level of low beam now that you can see is lighting up the road considerably better but not throwing very far so um, but I can keep that there's a car coming now and um, so yeah I can keep that going I'll drop down not blinding him at all so uh, unfortunately here comes another car so now we'll go to high beam after we pass this car and um, yeah we'll compare and I'll go through them again oh no car's turned off so that's low beam on the um, uh, ET racing LED now that's high beam I've got to say not brilliant it's much much better but is it is it going for 75 meters like my uh, LED lights on my car no it's probably good for about 40 meters it's considerably better than the hellers you could drive at night with these lights there's no ifs or buts about that but um, you know are they absolutely bloody day and night no not really uh, considerably better but not absolutely day and night okay so I'm going to go through them again oops <laughs> back to low beam that's low beam with the LEDs on that's the standard LED uh, halogen light from AJP so AJP standard light low beam low beam on the halogen uh, on the LED by ET Racing and high beam with the ET Racing so yeah there you go I'll drop some footage I try to capture the footage uh, before with the old standard um, uh, halogen lights both halogen lights in and um, yeah I sort of couldn't capture it as I say because of the screen here but um, I'll keep hitting that horn I can't see what I'm doing 
Uh, but yeah, there you go. Again, high beam. <laughs> low beam. I'm struggling to find them. High beam, low beam, off. So again, I can go straight from high beam to halogen low beam if I want to, if I'm worried about traffic. Um, but um, certainly I don't think the, the low beam on uh, on the LED is going to be an issue with traffic anyway. So, yeah, uh, listen, it's, it's a worthy upgrade. Is it worth $600? I don't think so, no. I, I don't think it's that night and day that um, you, would, uh, you would spend $600 on it. Not sure what else you're going to do uh, other than put some uh, LED spotlights on and keep the halogens. But, uh, listen, this will certainly make you more visible for oncoming traffic, the bright lights of the LEDs are much more visible. Uh, I know when riding in the bush and that, you can see a bike by its LED lights long before you can see the bike. So, as you can see, I'm standing up here looking down on the light and uh, it's really only good for about sort of 40 metres, really. Uh, wouldn't even be that, probably. Uh, so, yeah, a little bit disappointed, but um, I, I, I really wasn't that keen on bolting um, some uh, uh, LED spotlights on the side of the um, on the side of the um, fairing so to speak the sort side of the screen I thought no nah, they're just going to get snapped off the first time I drop it so I decided to go with this method but um, anyway it is what it is um, don't think it's worth the money but uh, sometimes you just got to go out and do it so uh, but certainly that that allows me to ride at night now I can ride along I'm doing sort of 90 k's now so I can ride along like this and it's okay so yeah certainly a lot better than what it was but there you go guys ET racing um, yeah it's okay <laughs> Now just regarding installation guys, it wasn't as straightforward as, as they said. It said it was a 10 minute plug and play and it certainly wasn't that. By the time you get the screen off and sort of work out how to pull it all apart, your 10 minutes is gone. Um, so then you, you, you go into the wiring and uh, yeah, there's no instructions. There's only these couple of photos on the website and my wiring line was a bit different to theirs. And so you eventually work it out, but you have to drill a hole on the side of your casing to run the switch wire out. But this Im image of the their, uh, of how it's wired up is sort of not very good representation and in actual facts the wires weren't plug and play you can see here that a couple of wires didn't match up I had to sort of make up a connector for the two wires um, and then by the time of course you get it all back together and get it back on the bike and the screen back on it's certainly a good hour to an hour or hour and a half so to speak I suppose you'd say um, the other thing was um, when you pull the old uh, halogen light out you have to use some shorter screws so you need some 20 mil by 8 gauge uh, stainless screws or black screws to, to, to fit the new um, LED in uh, the old screws don't work so yeah you'll blow through the back of the light fitting uh, if you use those so yeah not real straightforward but listen overall once you work it out it's it's a good setup and as I say the little switch that you run for the secondary high beam or secondary low beam I should say is is a really good little good little jigger and uh, yeah it'll, it'll be a, a worthy addition so but anyway guys I just sort of pull up here and I'll uh, go through the lights from the front and uh, um, you can sort of see them from as though you were coming towards the bike and uh, yeah we'll wrap it up there so that's low beam and you can see the little LED light so that's a little clearance light so that's you know you sort of your everyday running sort of lights um, that'll be what you see when I come towards you we'll go to the next level oh where is it that's low beam LED obviously that's a lot brighter isn't it the two uh, two LEDs are pointing down certainly you can drive into oncoming traffic with that no problems at all then we hit high beam As you can see, it turns the um, turns off the AJP halogen light on the bottom, and you get full power of the LED. So, yeah. But anyway, that's it, guys. Uh, if I stand beside the bike and do it, high beam, uh, low beam with LED, and uh, 
low beam with no LED or daytime driving light. So quite like the switching system. It's a great little idea. It gives you three levels of lighting. This is the daytime running lights that'll be on all the time. And then you've got your low beam. If you're really worried in foggy conditions or just if you're doing big kilometers, you might even leave that on for the whole day. And uh, of course, you've got your high beam. So yeah, not bad, not bad. Uh, but um, yeah, probably not as good as I'd like it to be. Anyway, guys. Thanks for watching. It's a pretty cold night. I'm going to head home. And uh, you know the story. A cup of tea and some chocolate. And off to Betty Boys. We'll hope to see you out in the trail soon.